that you use will be measured back to you again. Amen. Amen. The same measure that you use is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't worry. God's got your back. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And he says, pray for those who despitefully use you. Amen. Some of you were here for the bait of Satan. Amen. And when you were here for the bait of Satan, you heard him tell a story. Amen. And one of the reasons we did the book, The Bait of Satan, is we did it for me. Amen. <laughs> because of some of the greatest trials that ever happened in my life and some of the greatest attacks came to me through preachers. That's how they came. They came through me for preachers. It started all the way back in the 1980s. Amen. When I moved from Illinois to Ohio. Amen. Glory to God. And I'll tell you what. Y'all heard the story of God told me Donna was going to be my wife when I was looking at the back of her head. Amen. Well, if God hadn't done that, if He hadn't done that, <laughs> right? Who knows where I'd be or what I'd be doing today. Amen. But God did it. So He did it. So I had to say you're alive. So finally I had to get to the point where I had to say, I'm going to pray for this guy. Amen. I'm going to pray for this guy. Yeah. And you know what? I don't know if that guy ever, ever changed, but I'll tell you who changed, I changed. I'll tell you who got transformed, I got transformed. Amen. I can tell you who got delivered, I got delivered. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Why? Because the Bible says pray for those who persecute you. Right, Amen. Right, I'm sorry. Jesus' greatest attacks came through the church. Oh, my God. Yes. Paul's greatest attacks came through the church. That's where they came. Amen. So if you're under the press, if you're under the fire, glory to God, start shouting about it, start praising about it, because it's promotion time. Amen. It's promotion time. I'll tell you what, I one preacher, I know he cost me $100,000. I know he did. I mean, and I'm being generous. Right? Hallelujah. And you know what? I still love him. I still bless him. He's one of my best friends in the ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because after the first guy did me, the, the second guy didn't bother me as much. Amen. Right. Am I preaching right yet? Yeah. Come on. Am I preaching right to anybody? Hallelujah. Didn't bother me. Hallelujah. Because I came to the decision after praying for the first guy that I was going to be the bigger guy. I was going to be the bigger guy. Amen. Amen. And in ministry or in your life, Hallelujah. You don't serve a man, you serve God. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you don't serve a man and you serve God and you're crucified with Christ, who are you to judge another man's servant Amen. whether he does you right or whether he does you wrong? Amen. Right? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I told you about last week about a guy who went down, a pastor. I built an entire like sanctuary for him. Amen. Put classrooms behind it. Built it all up. When I got done, you know what he told me? We're building this by faith, Pastor. I said, glory to God. Four years later, right? Amen. Hallelujah. But you know what? God had my back. That's right. Amen. God had my back. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Four years later, God still had my back. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how long it took me to pay off that credit card. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. But you know what? I got to pay it off. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. But you know what? It didn't bother me. Now, when we were going through, did I sweat it? I had an opportunity. I did. I had an opportunity. But you know what? Then I caught me a roof. Amen. I caught me a roof. Glory to God. And you know what? I made eleven thousand dollars in three days. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Why? Because if you'll be faithful in the small things, God will reward you with the bigger things. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I brought that $11,000 home and Mama saw it. And you know what Mama said? Oh, praise praise God. God, we can remodel the house. I said, well, there goes my $11,000. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise God. But don't worry. Your faith will see you through. Amen. Amen. And the problem isn't the problem. You just think it's the problem. <laughs> Moses, right? God tells him, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses said, can't you get somebody else? God didn't have anybody else. 
Amen. So he tells, he goes down, he tells Pharaoh, let my people go. There's ten plagues that God does, and the children of Israel during these plagues are sitting there and watching God show up. So, before the children of Israel leave out of Egypt, God says, go spoil the Egyptians. Right after the last plague, all the Egyptians are grieving, right? Because the firstborn is dead. And he sends the women in to get the stuff from the Egyptians. Why? They know where all that stuff is at, right? They're going to get them some stuff. So then he's ready to take them out, and he's taking them out, and he leads them into the trap. There's one mountain on one side. There's another mountain on that side. The Egyptians are breathing down their neck. And they say to Moses, Moses, didn't we tell you this would happen? Didn't we tell you that the Egyptians would, co 